Okay, so today we're going to be making new kinds of enemies. Right now we have the noble enemy class, which represents all of our enemies, but that would be a pretty boring game if that's it. Uh, that's all we had. So we're going to be making new kinds of enemies. Before we get much further with that, I'm going to change one thing that we've been doing so far, and that's this. Check this out. It's a little bit lazy, and it's going to become a problem later on. We are just typing in the numbers of how big our enemies are, and our ship is, and our particles, and our bullets. You know, this could be a problem later on, so let's go and change that. In game object, we're going to give everything a width and a height. Everything is, you know, a rectangle anyways. It's eventually it'll be an image, but that's still a rectangle. So everything is going to get a width and height. So in our bullet, you know, we're going to, we want width and height to be here. So we have to define those things. Five, h equals five. You know, we're going to go and do all these different things. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with the fact that our width is 50 and our height is 50. It's just that if it's not a variable, it's going to get a little bit complicated later on when we go to have many different types of enemies and... And we want to be checking collisions with these different things. I don't, I don't know if I care too much about Game Launcher. It's not even visible anyways. So I'll save time and not put that in there. Particles. Yeah, we'll give that width and a height. And our ships will have a width and a height. Oh, it's 50 as well. Cool. Uh, there, that should be, should be good. So that's a small change to make for all your stuff. Star, you could do the same thing. Uh, oh yeah, stars actually we are, aren't using a width and height. We're using a, the size uh, component to also be the speed so that it gives a little bit of an illusion that fast, large moving things are in the front. So we're going to leave that alone. <coughs> okay, so we did that now. So now we're going to make some new kinds of enemies. We're going to make a new enemy. Uh, in a new tab, and it's going to be like, I don't know, we'll do some different kinds. We'll make a fast enemy, and we'll make a gunship, which is a cool name. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's cool or not, but <laughs> I like that name. So we're going to start with making a fast enemy, and what I want a fast enemy to do is I want it to be, you guessed it, faster. And this is a milestone right now, something a little bit different than we've done in this project. We're going to extend the enemy class. Exciting uh, class fast enemy. So yeah, it wants us to put in a constructor. So that's great. So we're gonna make. So what's the deal? Sorry uh, about um, extending the enemy class. Well, it's still gonna be extending the game object class because enemy extends the game object class. But then we can build upon this stuff too. So you know, it'll also have this show function, this act function as well, and this has died function. So we can just build on top. So fast enemy uh, will also take parameters. Uh, float incoming x, <coughs> incoming y, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call the enemies constructor. We did all this typing. Why retype it? I'm. I'd rather not. So what we can do is use the super keyword. Super refers back to the class that you extended. The Enemy class is the super class. Fast enemy is the subclass. So super refers to super class. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll send it incoming x and incoming y. And it'll be sort of this chain of you know parameters getting passed all the way down. And this will just do this stuff here, which is great. But in addition to that, I also want to override a little bit of it. I want to make dy equal, say, 10. Oh my gosh, how fast is that? That's too crazy fast. And you know what? Like, that's a that's a good start right there. We just made fast enemies. What about the has died function? What about the show? How about all those things? Well, you know what? If we're going to have the exact same show and act function with collisions and has died, then you don't have to write it again. It extended enemy. So if we don't override it, it'll just get whatever enemies show, act, and has died functions are. So I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to leave it, and it'll just use the same behaviors. 
So how do I get fast enemies into our game? Well, let's go to our launcher. So our launcher, in our second straight line, what I'll do is, uh, well, I guess I can't really differentiate those, can I? How about in our random wave? I'll make the random wave produce fast enemies. So I'll just type in fast enemy. And it will make a new kind of enemy. So straight lines still make regular enemies. Random waves will make fast enemies. So after, you know, 1500 frames, we'll see some fast enemies count. Let's see. Does it work? Am I lying to you? Let's observe the glorious slow enemies, the regular enemies. Yes, they are indeed slow. Easy pickings. Here's the second straight line. <clears throat> and then shortly after, another couple seconds, we should start seeing fast enemies. Wow, they're so fast! And I might be dif might actually be difficult to. I got one. Yeah. Woohoo. So you know, I, we made a new kind of enemy. Fantastic. So, what's the story? Well, that that was a pretty simple enemy to make, right? And notice that if it is simple, you don't have to do any more work than that simple amount of work. If it's just a matter of having a different dy. Cool, just you know, make a new class, use super to do all the hard work, and then just set what you need to set. That's fantastic. Uh, and if it's a little bit more complicated, then we'll get more complicated. <coughs> we are going to make a gunship, and it's a little bit complicated because we don't have enemies shooting bullets yet. But what I'll, ha I'll sort of set that up. So what I'll do is I'll have a spaceship come on screen, and it will float down to like the middle of the screen, and then it'll just stay there for a little while, and then it'll go away again. So that's gonna be that's gonna be the story. Uh, and the idea is that it'll come out on the screen, it'll stop and be like shooting bullets all over the place, and then it will go away. So we're gonna make a new kind of enemy. I'm gonna call this the gunship enemy. Uh, I'll just call it a gun gun. I don't know how to capitalize this gunship enemy. I I don't know. You guys could come up with better names. I'm not too sure. Gunship enemy. And what it's going to be is class gunship enemy extends enemy. And we're going to have a gunship enemy constructor that will take in incoming X and incoming Y so that our launchers can launch them from specific places. And then we're gonna call super dx, uh, sorry, uh, incoming x, incoming y. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll add in some additional things. So I don't mind if the spaceship travels the speed of the slow enemy, that's actually preferable to me. But what I would like to do is I'd like to make it look different. I'd like to make it stop, and that's going to require changing show and changing act. So I think we'll make the gunships bigger. That's that's the thing we'll, we'll change. Uh, maybe we'll give them a different color as well, just to make us have to do something different. So for our width, we'll set that to, say, 75, so it'll be clearly bigger. And our height will be 75. And when they come out, we'll make them in a slightly darker shade of orange. Um, so we'll make, uh, <laughs> where we got orange, and we'll make dark orange color, dark orange equals, I'm not too sure how to make that darker. <laughs> off the top of my head uh, without getting too crazy so maybe I'll just make it slightly different I'll make it um, red is adding more I guess taking away so let's make this like um, AA70 uh, maybe I'll make this um, 50 blah, 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 I don't know <laughs> Not too sure what that's gonna look like when we actually get it out there, but that's okay. It's gonna be that's going to, well. It'll be a surprise for everybody to behold. I think that'll be fun. Um, so uh, I just realized I was typing in fast enemy, 
the width and height. Sorry, I meant to do that in gunship enemy. So we'll come back here. Gunship enemy is the one that should be 75. Height 75. Uh, unless you want your fast enemies to be bigger. And then I'll also add in... Um, I'll also add in the uh, color stuff. So that's going to be void show. So if we have our own custom void show, then this is the one that will apply to gunship enemies. And otherwise, if you don't write one in, then the enemy's default one will apply. Uh, it's going to be a rectangle at x, y, and width and height, which will be bigger. And our act function will be kind of the same, right? Like, we still want this stuff. I'm hesitant to copy and paste it. All the all this code is, is so nice. I don't really want to, you know, make this code, have to, like, copy and paste all the things I'm going to copy. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, void check collisions. I'm going to make this a separate function. And let's see, does that work? That works OK. Uh, let's see, void check collisions. And of course, it needs the parens to make it a function. And what I'll do is we'll call um, check collisions from the act function. And that way, over here in gunship enemy, in the act function, instead of copying and pasting, because apparently my copy and paste doesn't work right now, control C and control V are not working, uh, I can just set to check collisions. And then that will call that code that's in enemy. So we've just taken all this code here and put it in a separate function. I'm sure I was super confusing. I'm apologizing <laughs> for <coughs> that um, unfortunate uh, break in, in things. But I think it'll be fine. So there's your check collisions. And I'm going to go back to gunship. So it's going to also check collisions. It's also going to move. Uh, except that we only want it to move until it gets to a certain point. So we'll say something like, hey, if uh, y is less than the height divided by 2. So what we've done here is we've redefined how these things act. They move as long as they're at the top at the screen. And they constantly check collisions. So that's that's great. So now our launcher, we need to launch some of those things. So maybe uh, instead of fast enemies, now I'll launch gunship enemies. And I haven't saved for a while, so let's save that. And we'll see how that goes. We'll see if we get a fatter, darker spaceship come out that stops in the center of the screen. So. Uh, there it is. There's some of those slow enemies. Uh, if I'm blowing them up. And I'm sure you are scrubbing ahead. If you're not, you probably should. <laughs> okay, and now out comes the fast. So those darker, and they should stop right in the middle. They still have the same amount of hit points, which, you know what? It's kind of lame now that I think about it. So I think what I'll do is a gunship enemy should also have HP, like, I don't know, like a big number, like 100. Like, it should take a long time to kill these things. They're big, fat, dark things, right? They need to take time to, to kill, so we can add that in there. Presumably, while they're stopped, they're going to be, you know, firing bullets and doing all sorts of fun things. I guess I should have set the launchers to launch them earlier rather than later, but I think we'll just watch. <laughs> Memorize the pattern of this game significantly, uh, but don't worry, we'll make it more exciting. Here we go. So now it takes a long time before we actually kill these guys off, which is great. And yeah, we're putting all sorts of sparks into the air. <coughs> and eventually we will get rid of them. So now we have two different kinds of enemies. These enemies will get a lot more interesting when we have bullets coming out of the enemies, so that's something that will be coming up later. 
Uh, I haven't quite decided if we're going to just reuse the same bullet class. That would be one way to do it. We'd have to bring in some more code though because if you're using the same bullet class, then bullets could hurt, like your own bullets could hurt you, or an enemy's own bullets could hurt the enemy. And that's just silly, so I don't think we want to go down that road. Although, what we could do is, you know, give a Boolean variable to the bullet class. So, it could be like, you know, a good variable. Those should be true or false. The other option is to make a new class called, like, enemy bullet or something like that. And, and then they're never the same. And it's just a little bit more extra code and duplication of things, which is a bit bad design. So, I think we'll probably go down the road of making uh, the same bullet class, but making them flexible so they can represent different kinds of bullets enemy bullets and evil bullets. So we'll do that next time and what I'd like everyone in class to do today is you know make sure to make a fast enemy, make a gunship enemy, and think about other kinds of enemies. Maybe enemies that fly diagonally. Maybe enemies that are born at the bottom of the screen and fly up. Well yeah, that might be hard because our launchers aren't at the bottom of the screen. But you know you can you can play with that kind of thing. You can make enemies that Instead of just moving, um, sorry, instead of just, you know, changing X and Y, what if your enemy changed DX and DY as well, so that they maybe, like, moved in an S-shaped pattern down the screen, um, so that they flew around in a circle. You know, you could change DX and DY as the game is running and while they are live to make some interesting patterns. So see what you can do with that, and I wish you the best of luck. All right, thanks everybody.